Lauren, thanks for being here today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me here today, actually. You're welcome. So now we're going to talk about a real world thing that you worked on and built. And I can't wait to see all the, the details on this. I'll let you take it away here. Well, I think it's interesting that you you say that I built it because I, this is one of my favorite apps that I've been a part of. You know, I've built quite a few for my school. Um, I'm an assistant principal in Tacoma, Washington. So I built quite a few apps for my school just in terms of running things more efficiently. Anyone who works with an educator or knows an educator, I mean, education is just busy, point blank, period. And um, so being an administrator is just is definitely busy. So what we were doing, um, we're, well, really where this this school bus app um, came from, well, came from the community, but there was just, uh, I would say, the setup for the problem that we were having was that students often ended up on the getting on the wrong bus after school. This always happens a lot at the beginning of the school year. And then as the school year goes on, it happens a little bit less. But, you know, a bunch of kids come out of the building. We have over 500 students. There's, you know, four or five buses out in the front and kids just get on the bus. They don't even always pay attention. And if the buses don't park in the same order for whatever reason, then it's even worse. So I knew that that was a problem. And especially for me, because, you know, I'd be packing up at the end of the day, getting ready to go. And then a bus would just show up at five o'clock and say, hey, this student was on the wrong bus. And so now we're bringing them back to school. So then it's on me to kind of figure out where this child is supposed to go and be. Or parents would call the school and say, you know, my child didn't get off on the right stop. So then we would have to call the transportation department. And then transportation would then call dispatch and dispatch would call the bus and say, okay, is this kid here? I mean, so you can imagine at that point, you know, a parent is just They've been waiting at the bus stop now for <laughs> and don't know where their child is. So it takes it takes quite a long time just to do all of that. And then as a result, really, of all of that, a student ends up on a bus for hours until they're returned back to the school or to the correct stop or whatever it is. And oftentimes, you know, if a student is riding a school bus, a parent doesn't necessarily have transportation to get up to the school to come and pick them up. So then we have to figure out how to get that child home. So that was just a big problem. I was like, okay, there's definitely a way that I can streamline this process. And I knew that an app was a way to do it. I just didn't really have the time. So the intermediate solution really was we ended up with clipboards and printed out lists, you know, blue bus, red bus, green bus. This is who rides this bus. And, you know, standing outside, you wait outside um, and you just check off student names one by one on this list. And you have upwards sometimes of 50, 60 kids on a bus. And then students would get checked in. But then the problem with that was, one, um, it was a paper list. And our buses can update, you know, the same bus can update maybe four or five times, you know, in a week. Uh, so if a student moved uh, buses or a student was added to the bus or removed from the list, then we always had to constantly reprint that. And then uh, the clipboards, I mean, a clipboard <laughs> is a coveted item in an elementary school. So if there's a clipboard laying around, it's like, oh, I don't think anybody's using it for this. So then they take the, whatever papers off and go and do whatever they want to do with the clipboard. So that was also another issue. And then the biggest issue was that the bus, our bus loading area where we load students on the bus, that's not a covered area. And we live in Washington. So the majority of the fall, it's raining. And so you have people standing outside with clipboards and papers and what's your name and checking them off. And it was just a mess. It was, it helped, but it was a big mess. <laughs> and so, I just put it out to the community. I posted on Twitter, I hashtagged the power addicts and power apps, and I just asked, hey, this is kind of a hack for good scenario. And I know it's not a hack for good time, but if you can help with this, this is the situation and you know who can help me build it. And this is just uh, one screenshot of just some of the immediate Twitter responses that I got from that of people who just wanted to help either provide solution or, you know, hands on build the app. And I was blown away because I just thought, oh, a couple of people might offer me some advice, but I ended up having a group of people who really wanted to build it. 
and you know, shout out to Eric Sabe. I think he's on this call. Um, he really helped to spearhead that and took it and um, created a WhatsApp group. And um, everybody in that group, they worked really behind the scenes. I didn't do anything on this app. You know, I felt bad because in this WhatsApp group, I'm getting all these updates and people are saying, hey, what about this? What do you think about this? I tried this, do you want a demo? And I really didn't have time to join in, you know, on any of that because I was, you know, I was doing my job. So I'm just really grateful to the community for doing that. But anyway, so they, um, they built it. They said, hey, Lauren, here it is. Can we get on a call with you and just kind of show you the back end of it? Make sure when we hand it off that you understand what's going on. And of course I made the time for that. And I mean, I think that this took, I want to say like a month maybe <laughs> and this, these are people doing this in their spare time you know everybody else you know is working and whatnot so maybe about a month and then it took a little bit of time for us to adopt it in terms of getting everybody trained on it but then here we are you know this is my family liaison she's checking students in on the bus on on her this is on her personal device on her phone so i didn't have to buy any extra devices to make this happen there's no more paper lists and it was really quick and easy, you know, we're able to check the kids in behind the app runs a flow where, you know, it's cleared every night because we don't need to store, store that data. And I mean, the response, we have a, a four or five teachers who stand outside the bus and check kids in. The response was really positive in terms of not having to look for your list and reprint and all of that. It's just in your pocket. So you just run out and you just go check kids in uh, on the bus. I'm curious, Lauren, so how many kids have got on the wrong bus since you had the app? Is it zero? Oh, I haven't. I have not. This is this was the first year. I mean, granted, we had to end early because of COVID, but this was the first year since I started that once we implemented this, it was done. I didn't That's awesome. bus did not come back. <laughs> there wasn't that dreaded five o'clock bus where I had my bag getting ready to leave and go, oh, here's a bus. It didn't happen again. It was easy. So I'll show you some of the features that really help to make that a bigger, um, an even bigger success. So um, we have, you know, three buses, blue bus, red bus, and green bus. And um, what it does on the back end is the user, their name actually populates right here automatically. And then you just decide which bus you're checking in. And then I just added some fake students here. Usually we have about 50, 60 kids, you know, on the list here. And then all the, the person has to do is scroll through and they just check that the student, like, okay, one of three students is on the bus. So what that also helps with is knowing, okay, is everyone on the bus, first of all, before the bus even leaves? The other piece that was really helpful, um, this was another point of confusion, was, you know, okay, this student doesn't ride the bus on Friday. And those types of things are important because, well, one, I, in one scenario, it was really helpful because we actually had a pair of twins who, they didn't go to the same place after school and they flipped and rotated which days. Like one twin would go home with, and then one twin would go to the boys and girls club and then they might flip flop. And mom had this worked out for a very specific reason. And they always tried, no, we go here, we go here. I want to go with my friend. And they'd pull up that note and say, no, this is the day, this today is Tuesday, and you're supposed to go here. So that was really helpful. I mean, so you can imagine with all of those, you know, every, you know, over 500 kids, every different little nuance in terms of how they go home and when they go home and where, it really cut down on all of that. And so, I mean, you can, search for a student, you can search by student name, you can search by bus or teacher. So all of that was really helpful for us in terms of just being able to get the kids on the right bus uh, at the right time. And like I say, it's my favorite app because it was built by the community. You know, it wasn't something that I, I, I mean, yeah, Power Apps has really helped me because I'm not a developer and I, you know, don't know how you don't know how to just build an app but this was something that i just put out and said hey you know can you help me with this and in a month i had what i needed and no extra expense to uh the school or um a ton of training or onboarding for anyone so but yeah that was quick quick overview but yeah that's pretty much how how we came to be yeah that's awesome what a great story. I'm glad Eric is here today, too, in the call. 
Ben, Eric, and everybody who worked on that. I noticed in the, the screenshot of Twitter you had that there were several people on that list who've actually been on, on this call before sharing their <laughs> stuff too. That is awesome. really neat. And the best part is the kids are getting on the right bus now yes. and nobody's worried and that's super. And I get to get home on time. <laughs> so awesome. definitely. Oh, Chuck's got a story. Oh, Chuck's gone through it firsthand, huh, Chuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, that hasn't happened to my little guy yet. Yeah. But yeah. I can totally identify with what that feeling must be like just thinking about it, like, oh my gosh. Right. So, what is, uh, where do you all store the data for that? How did you do that one? Um, on the back end, we used SharePoint uh, okay. just to update our list. And what's also really nice is we have um, the app embedded in Teams, and we also have I also have our SharePoint list embedded as a top tab in Teams because we have, um, you know, a, a couple of our paraeducators who really, mo you know, either monitor the app in terms of who's getting on the bus or, you know, like if a parent calls, did my child get on, they, they can see, yes, that child is checked in or um, adding students because, like I said, it's pretty fluid, could just depend. And so it's really just the ease of use and you know, minimal requirement of training in terms of being able to update it is really helpful. Yeah. That's great. That's <laughs> great. So is was I'm curious, is the red, the green, and the blue bus, is that just for the demo? Because I see all the pictures, the the bus is yellow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, okay, that, that, that's hilarious because um so each bus, you know, has a number, but for elementary, we assign it a color because that's a little bit easier. And we had a kindergartner uh, the very first day he was on the bus, he rode the bus. He comes out and he goes, no, I ride the red bus. There's no red bus, they're all yellow. And we're like, no, it's just called the red bus, honey. <laughs> he was not going to get on the bus. <laughs> Having got on the wrong bus one time myself as a kid, I can identify with that thing, <laughs> the kids on the bus forever. Yeah. Yeah. I did that as well. I rode probably mm -hmm. around half of Tacoma and then was finally returned to my parents when I was in like third grade, I think. <laughs> That's really neat. So I'm I'm curious, since the app was community developed, is this app out in the gallery or anything for other institutions to use if they want to? It's interesting because I thought about that last night. I go, oh, I should upload, you know, <laughs> it to the community. It was such a, um, or I think, I think maybe Eric might have. I'm not sure. It was just such a, hey, I need it. I need to use it type of situation. I didn't think about that. But if yeah. Eric hasn't uploaded it, I definitely will. That's really awesome. I so somebody mentioned they already thought of somebody. Oh yeah, Richard said he says at least one school transportation supervisor would love this. So awesome. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. This is this is one of a uh, boy. I think we've been doing this call for like I, I don't know. I think this is like the 18th, 19th time we've done this call now or something. And this is the first time we've had a story like this where we showcased something everybody in the community worked on. It's really yeah. neat to see. I hope we can have more of these stories on the call in the future. Well, yeah, thank yeah. you for coming and sharing it with us. It's really neat yeah. to see that. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.